Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, building high-performance geospatial analytics tools for the web using Vue and DeckGL. The name is quite long, but the, I'll try to make the talk really short. Cool. Uh, so my name is Mustaq Ahmed. I work as a UX engineer at Local.ai. We are basically a startup focusing on location intelligence and analytics. Basically, we work with uh, on-demand companies to help them figure out how their ground team is performing. Cool. Mm, yeah. So we'll be mostly talking about what and why of geospatial analytics than actually building anything right now because uh, we don't go into any live coding. So uh, the main concepts are what is geospatial analytics and visualization, why you should do analytics on location data, and a few of the science behind the location analytics, how you can do it better, and how you can actually build the beautiful visualizations using Vue and DeckGL. Mm, yeah. So I hope you guys have seen uh, visualization like this in uh, annual reports of companies, magazines, all these things. So the thing about this visualization is once you look, take a look at it, you can actually clearly understand what's happening out there. So this is a visualization of a human footprint on the world. Basically, once you notice the countries, you will probably understand the population is higher, the footprint is higher. So in case if you have given the numbers, for example, India, few billions, China, a few more billions, you might not even get the entire context of it. So the thing about maps is once you add the maps to any of the da your data, it gives that invaluable context of location to your data that makes your users understand 10x more insights from your data than just showing them numbers. So any, how many of you guys are your native Bangaloreans? Native to Bangalore? Yeah. For others, this is a fun fact. This is the largest route BMTC takes in Bangalore of around 117 kilometers with about five hours. Uh, just a fun fact. Yeah. And this is a small visualization I did for uh, all the bus route in BMTC in Bangalore. We'll discuss how we built it and how you can actually build something even more better than that. Cool. So for starters, what is geospatial data? So geospatial data is nothing but uh, data regarding uh, any object and events of phenomena on the surface of the earth. While I say surface of the earth, it means it should require a latitude and longitude coordinate. Without that, it won't be a geospatial data. And uh, geospatial analytics is uh, basically using this geospatial data, manipulating it using tools, and deriving useful insights and uh, visualization to make your users understand the information you are trying to convey them. So by this, let's uh, jump into why you should do geospatial analytics. So. In, if you guys, most of them have watched Hollywood movies and you might have seen FBI and CIA use like this really huge dashboards with world maps in it. So that's one big use case of having geospatial visualization. Plus, uh, most of you guys are working in startups. So how many of you guys actually use, uh, use your customers, collect your customers location in one or the other way? Yeah, yeah, a few of the companies. So. For them, they will actually make sense to understand if you visualize your data, you will get the really valuable insights. So where your customers are actually coming from, for example, if you consider an on-demand company like Sugi or Shadowfax or even Bounce or Dunzo, if you can really understand where your orders are coming from, you can actually send your uh, riders or delivery executive for that particular location. So this will actually increase your uh, business outcome, plus you'll actually understand what's happening out there. And from a customer perspective, like when we are using any application, having the location inside for your delivery process, you'll actually understand where your order is right now. So whenever you're ordering something, you'll be always looking at that. Where is my order? Where is my order? Plus this is also a huge benefit for companies utilizing location data. Most of the companies we work with, uh, most of the time, the location data in their DB is just there or they will just drop it while doing any analysis. So yeah, utilizing location co context of your data, profit. So. How many of you guys have uh, known this? Uber's God view. Anyone heard about this? Uber's God view? Yeah, one person. So for others, I'll give you a little bit of context of what, it, what is Uber's God view. In around 2014 or something, Uber engineers built uh, this dashboard, mapping out all the live uh, user ride hailing process and the current cabs, where, it, where are they driving? So it basically what it gave, gave the, their operation team is a clear visibility of how their ground team is performing right then. So you can basically understand when, once you have the clear visibility of your ground teams or your customers, where they are right now, you can actually take much more decision out there. 
So this God view has helped Uber a lot, and they later automated it based on like how to put surge pricing, where are the orders coming high, where my cars are staying idle, put a surge pricing over in any of the locations, and actually utilize utilize your assets more. So, but the thing about that is once they released God view, they didn't release it. It was an internal tool initially, but they used it for an internal meeting to show off to other attendees, and it got leaked and it. Basically, it causes them a lot billions in fines because it's actually pri privacy of user data. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So, how many of you guys actually build dashboard in a company? I know the other point, building dashboards. Yeah, most of them. So, the thing about building dashboard is most of the time you can only convey your users two things: what and when. But uh, it's really hard to show them where. Either you put the name of the place or something, for example, Koramangala, Madiwala or something, and just put the numbers out there. But the final thing, why, which is actually said as the four W's of information, what, when, where, and why. Why will only be able to achieve by your user by understanding all the other four W's. What, when, and where. That's how a ideal dashboard should look like. It should actually convey all the three W's if possible. And the final W, why, you can actually achieve it through machine learning or AI. So once you add the location context to your data, you can actually achieve the third one, where. Instead of just giving numbers and name, you can actually show a map, actually you make your users understand what's actually happening out there. So yeah, these are some of the use cases that we work on and help out other companies uh, do it better, better utilization, targeted promotion, size pricing, routing, and a lot more. So you might be wondering right now, if you have just location, latitude, and longitude, can't we just plot it on a map? Isn't it that easy? I mean, like uh, before starting anything, how many of you guys have worked with maps, at least some visualization layers or something? Yeah, most of them. So you might be understand if you get a latitude and longitude, you can easily plot a point over there. But does that help actually? No. So the problem with uh, plotting points on the map is you will lose a lot of things. Once you put a marker somewhere, one or two places, it's okay. You can actually point out certain restaurants in Bangalore. But once you have like uh, consider a company like uh, Sugi, Sugi they receive around like millions of pings from each of their riders every day. Think about plotting these points in a map. It will make no sense at all. So yeah, I'll look something like this and I'll give you a small example how we can improve this thing in a different way. So visualizing 100,000 points in a city becomes easily cluttered. This is the context in ping location and trips data. With just points, you can never achieve like uh, to plot a path of your ride or anything like that. So you might need to improve your, how you utilize your location data. And it is difficult to attribute to a particular region or city. Once you have a location data, it might keep on changing based on users. And that, that context of your user gets lost along with the user. You might not understand it right now, but I'll actually explain it in a bit more depth in upcoming slides. But yeah. So this is uh, one of the visualization which is done by crowdsourcing the uh, the first thousand wage dumps in Bangalore, it's crowdsourced data. I actually provide the link and all the data you need so you guys can explore. So this is what happens when you actually give the just plot points over there. Can you guys actually understand anything from this? But uh, I'll try to show you something different that we did with uh, the same data. So this is the same data, but uh, when you add a bit more context and manipulate the location data a bit much, much more better, you can actually get much more context of what's happening with your location data. For example, this clearly states which part of uh, Bangalore is, has much more number of waste dumps and you can actually take actions regarding that. So it has a lot of social impact. So if you have any data, instead of just plotting some points, I will give you guys some ideas of how to do it better. We'll explore that in a while. Cool. So most of you guys who have worked with maps, I guess you might have used a leaflet, Google Maps, and just their own native APIs for layering. But let's try something different today. So we'll use Mapbox GL, just because uh, they have the open source version for the JavaScript SDKs. 
plus for data manipulation if you need data manipulation you can use the d3 or let the backend developers handle all these things and uh, for the visualization we'll be using a library called as deck.gl it is a library developed by uber engineers to do vis spatial visualization in a much more performance way and for state management you can use any of the libraries as you prefer vuex view of vuex or might not so before proceeding any further anyone use deck.gl before no it might be really interesting then so deck.gl is a webgl powered framework for visual exploratory data analysis of large data sets so whenever you are plotting any points in your map if it crosses a limit around like 100000 or uh, maybe 50000 points your web browser will be completely irresponsive i mean you can't add much more data into a web browser because each marker you add to the map is actually considered as a layer in the map so once you add more data into it it'll be really bad user experience so what deck.gl does is it uses gpu to actually do 64 bit uh, precision computing to actually leverage the gpu's performance to improve this rendering rendering process so you can actually create reusable layers instead of actually putting all the logic into the application you can actually separate the layering logic separately and share it along with your other applications also plus it supports wide variety of visualization so in case you are using deck.gl you don't have to rewrite any of the code for any of the visualization almost all the native visualization you require for your data exploration process is already available plus most of the layers are reactive in nature so if you are uh, familiar with uh, vue and uh, Redux, uh, react uh, reactive nature deck.gl provides something similar with their apis whenever you update any data of the layers it gets automatically re-rendered plus yeah animations mm. so one problem with deck.gl is uh, they have a native vanilla js library along with that a react wrapper it doesn't have anything for vue js so we are planning to write uh, vue js wrapper for deck.gl it's in process but uh, if you are using right now deck.gl with vue js you have to use the module separately or you can use it uh, together but uh, it's better to use module separately so along with that we might need to use mapbox gl mapbox is a uh, something similar to google so you got i got to install two libraries mapbox gl or any wrapper around Map, mapbox gl which make your life easier and uh, the core library of uh, deck and mapbox native bindings and layers or the different types of layers basically yeah so the thing about deck.gl is it stays there is two ways to actually use deck.gl in your uh, applications so one way is to actually utilize mapbox gl's uh, custom layers there is a uh, there is native bindings provided by mapbox to actually write your own layers in into mapbox ka layering process so you can either use deck.gl inside mapbox or use deck.gl outside mapbox and uh, overlay on top of a map and actually let deck.gl control the map so basically your visualization will stay on top of the map without hindering anything but uh, if you use within mapbox gl you can actually get cool visualization like this where you can actually plot between the buildings it gives much more flexibility so i have created a small repository if you guys uh, want to check out the code snippets will be here i won't be doing live coding but yeah i'll show you a few of the visualization i have done using that and i'll just walk you through the code So this is the initial path layer I showed you before of the ba Bangalore's route data. This data is uh, not available for public use, but uh, there is a guy called as uh, Sajjad or something. He actually open sourced the data during his uh, data hack summit happened recently. So he is uh, it's he actually open sourced the data. You can actually use it. So I'll show walk you through the code in a bit. is it visible mm, yep yeah cool so 
Yeah, you just need a map initially. That's you can use uh, either a binding or a view map box or a original map box GLJS library and render a map and uh, import the path layer from deck.gl layers and map box layer from map uh, deck.gl. So this is the binding which makes deck.gl use the map box custom layering logic and uh, include the deck.gl library inside the map box layers itself. Instead of overlaying deck.gl library on top of map box, this will actually use the map box layering library and use it within Mapbox. So as I showed the picture before of uh, visualizing between the buildings and all, you can do it with this. But uh, currently this particular module is in experimental stage. You can't do highly reactive things, but you can do static visualizations. So once you're done with that, you can pass the Mapbox uh, um, API token and you can provide the styles for it. And initial loading, and this is that simple. Once you have the data in hand, you can actually see we are passing the path data, and all the three things here are iterative process. That means each of the each points in your data will be iterated over through, and uh, it will you can use your your own manipulation logic over there. But I'm just ex extracting the path, which is basically latitude and longitude, an array of latitude and longitude, and they're doing some uh, RGB things to actually get the colors based on the distance and the time it takes to reach the route, reach the bus route. So based on that, we can actually get the colors for the paths and you can actually see it's that simple. Just one function, you can get the visualization ready without any problems. So the APIs are quite simple, so I won't be much going through the API. So if you go to the deck.gl website, you can actually build your own visualization really easily. So, yeah. So this is one more visualization using the same data, except this will be, this is the frequency of uh, BMTC's bus rides across each route. And uh, the small circles are uh, each bus stops in Bangalore. And you can actually see it creates like really beautiful visualization with the existing data you have. It's not just a beautiful fact, but it gives a lot more insight about where exactly the most buses are going on. If you are planning to get a flat or something, which area should you get based on these data? Cool. So this is basically the same concept as I showed before. It's a path layer and a geo JSON layer. The Bangalore BMT is a geo, uh, bus stops data. You can actually get in the same repository. I'll share the link if you need. And same, you give a map to it. And then I get the geo JSON layer and path layer. And this is how we render the path. It's the same logic as before, how we showed all the bus routes in Bangalore. And this is the GeoJSON layer. You just pass the create a new map box layer and pass the GeoJSON layer object and pass the data and iterate through it. Cool. So So you, everyone might not be liking how uh, visualizing just BMTC's paths or something. You might want to see something that's on your own data. So let's do something interesting with your own data. So if you want to see where you were like uh, two years back, where you were right now, you want to visualize how your two years were like, or if you went to a road trip uh, in the past two or three years and you want to see how your uh, paths actually looks like, or if you are going to office every day, you want to see which path I'm digging the most or which, what is your daily pattern over the past few years. So there is one person who knows it all. You guys know who it is? Obviously, yeah, Google. So there is a Google's takeout page where you can actually get your location data. So I have visualized mine, but uh, yeah, wait a second. So if you go to takeout.google.com, you can actually see there's an option to actually download your entire data. So. So what we currently require is not any of these data. There is uh, everything about you in Google, but we just need uh, your location history. Yeah, this particular thing, they will provide you in a JSON format, which is basically a GeoJSON format with all your location. My data contain almost four years of my location data, which is pretty much good enough to do some basic visualizations. Yours might contain maybe six years or something. But yeah, so this is something I build with uh, my data. So once you go back home after this talk, 
or this event, you can actually try out how to visualize your data and you can actually see how it goes like. So this is, I just created a heat map, heat map out of all the location data. I'll show you how it is done, but uh, due to time constraint, I will be skipping through a few slides. So I'll get to the good parts right now. So, yeah, so people who have worked with location data. So if you want to see what is around a user, if you have a location data of a user, you want to see what are the restaurants near him? What will you, how will you find it out? You'll basically use a concept called geofencing. It's just basically from a user's point of view, is this location, you actually draw a radius of a certain amount and you, can, you actually find out what are the restaurants in that particular area. The problem with that is this geofencing actually moves along with the user. So the context of your data always moves along. So how Uber does this is Uber actually created a library called as H3, which actually indexes the entire world and converts into hexagons. So any part of the world has an hexagon representing it. So what happens is instead of ge uh, geofencing, you can actually use these small grids and the context of these grids will always stay in these grids. For example, if a user comes into a grid, you can actually say this much amount of user is coming into the grid. And the context of that grid always stays in that grid and you have the location, your ground knowledge of your particular city. So Uber, Uber uses the same thing instead of geolocation, they use us uh, grids to actually find your rides, nearest rides, which if you are in a particular grid, they, are, they will actually find what else uh, cars are there in the same grid. They'll actually use that information. So it is not just one big grid. You can actually go smaller and smaller. Each grid contains seven other smaller grids and it goes down as the res resolution increases. So we'll use something similar to actually visualize your own uh, geo data. So this is a small example of how it works. If you have a several points in a map, you can actually bring it inside a grid inside. and actually convert that based on how many points are there in each grid, you can actually color them out. So, and uh, H3 has a native JS library, which actually provides this facility. You don't have to do anything, just pass in the latitude and longitude of point. It'll actually give you out the X grid, grid ID. That means each and every grid in the planet has a unique ID of it. So we don't have to do any computation. Whatever you point give, whichever grid it falls under, it will give you an ID of it. And this ID is particularly really interesting because uh, it actually contains the resolution of the grid also. Even if it's a really large grid or really small grid, everything is encoded inside this particular grid. So using the same location data, you can actually change the heat map that I showed you right now into something a bit more interesting. So you can actually see these are like uh, tiny grids. It might seem like a nightlight, but they are tiny grids representing my path over the past four years. And you can actually see which area I am currently right now, or not currently right now, but which areas I have spent most of my time on. So the red bars actually in indicates the amount of number of more grids in my location data. So I'll just walk you through the code. So I have the Google's location data. You can download your own and add it to the repository and just map through each location, latitude and longitude and get the hex grid out of it. Then count the number of hex grid. That means the repetition of hex grid that will give you the weight of each grid and you can actually use that as the your proximity of that grid. Plus pass it to the hexagon layer. So if you are doing large visualization, you don't have to send the latitude and longitude to your front end. If you're doing that, you can actually do all this calculation in the back end just convert into grid ID and send the, just the grid ID to the front end and front end will be able to visualize everything really easily. Plus utilizing the GPU power, it will be really fast. You can actually visualize almost 100,000 or 200,000 points within no time. Cool. And that's basically it iterates to each of the grid IDs and gives it a color. 
and puts an elevation to that. Awesome. So I hope uh, you guys go home and do your own data visualization about your Google location data and find some interesting insight out of it. So yeah, if you go to like a real resolution of 12 or something of the grid that becomes really tiny grids, you can actually see really give you guys much more insight about how your city is looking like at night or with your own location data, which area has much more users, which area does more orders, which area gets more cab rides. So this is a small screenshot from our platform that we are building. And that's it. Thank you.